see what we can do. Well, there's my head. Let's make this. Okay, guys. Let me turn this music off. Everybody, can you hear me? Can I hear myself? Not really. Let's turn this up. Can you hear me now? Still not loud enough. Oh, I know why. I was playing that loud flute. That's what it was. Well, welcome to Mark Teaches Music. I'm Mark. And uh, I want you to have fun and be awesome. And this is our to play and sing question and answer. And uh, I got to try to get the right thing pulled up here. Seemed like I'd be better at this by now. But I'll, take, I'll get better. So anyway, so uh, in this play and uh, to play and sing live stream, I'm going to answer every single question in the world about music. Uh, except I super duper reserve the right to say I do not have the slightest idea. And there are many things that are like that. Uh, yesterday, last week, somebody asked about um, effects pedals. And uh, I had one, one really uh, snide, private comment from one of my insiders. And so it, my concise answer would be, I don't know a lot about pedals. What I did is I went out and bought, at the time, a $2,500 massive board that had everything on the planet uh, and I've seen people buy I need a chorus and they buy a chorus pedal and they go well you know gosh I need a flanger and they go and buy a flanger pedal and they they say oh my gosh you know I need a uh, you know whatever and they end up spending you know all this money for these boards and yes I'm very aware that a lot of super cool people and just two stands out of Eric Johnson um, play with pedals and, and, and they should I should you know huzzah you know and so I wasn't trying to punt that question. It was just more I was, you know, just pondering on my own little issues. So I say now today is the 14th day of September. This is 2022. Uh, and um, if you want more inf information about uh, taking lessons, go to www.dallasmusiclessons.com, which is, of course, the coolest place uh, where every, everybody, all the cool people are there. If you're not there, you know, well, I won't say anything about your coolness, but you should really ponder just how cool you are if you're not there all the time. So uh, let's see here. Um, I want you to jump right in and ask me your questions. And I'm right here, I'm looking at them, and I have some uh, uh, ones that for through the uh, week that have come in. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, I, like I said, I'll reserve the right to say I have no clue. Uh, and if you like this, subscribe to it. Um, hit the, you know, what is it, the bell, you know, where you get notifications. And, and the biggest thing, I think, is to share with people. Yeah. I wish to give you the site. It's the site for musical life. That's what you should do. You should share the site and say, hey, buddy, you know, you should watch this uh, YouTube video if you want to be cool. All, only cool people can come. But, of course, I think you're all cool. So go ahead and come. All right, so I'm going to jump right into the questions. And uh, here is a great question, especially if you're like three years old. Uh, and the question is, <laughs> at what age should I start my kids in music lessons? Uh, so now I'm not tooting my own horn, doot, doot, uh, but I have taught about 3,000 people over the last really 35 years. Um, so a lot of people, a lot of little kids, a lot of big old kids, several dead people. And um, so I feel like I can speak authoritatively on this. And if you need a cutoff, I'm going to give you two things. Uh, a cutoff like you know this age and the age would be eight and uh, so just to comment to think about it you know kids a lot of kids including yourself you, you might remember or not you know uh, so you're telling somebody take a second finger put it on the third fret of the fifth string well you know a lot of kids are going like you mean I have separate fingers you know this this finger doesn't have to move they don't move they're not a glove <laughs> little bitty kids think of their hand as a mitten you know, like, you know, so anyway, uh, usually about consistently, uh, not utterly consistently, but uh, approximately uh, at age eight is when a kid can uh, listen and learn cohesively, and you can count on them learning, uh, and there are uh, kids that are not able to learn uh, until they're 10 or 12, you know, and they're kids who can learn when they're six. You know, and my definition is a couple of things. One thing is, like, can you tell? Can you say the ABCs? Okay, and then the other thing, quite literally, and that you should do this if you're a parent, 
is, is can my kid sit still for 30 minutes in a lesson? Now, I don't mean like, you know, just not doing anything silent, but, but um, a lot of parents are looking for, uh, and if, if you are, you shouldn't put your kids in private lessons, uh, are looking for, um, hmm, I'll say babysitting or, you know, Johnny is so awesome and he just, he gets on the, he gets on the piano and he beats on it with his daddy's hammer. And I just want to get him in lessons. And uh, that's a great thing and I really believe in that. But the question about whether private lessons would benefit him or not is really about, I think, whether he can stay still and receive from that. And there's uh, kinder music and other things that are sort of the more, uh, when your kid is young, uh, it's not the age now, it's the psychological age. And that doesn't mean intelligence, you know, it can be brilliant, uh, but not able to privately, let's me and you one-on-one -on -one sit down and learn uh, how to play the piano or the ocarina or the urhu. Uh, and um, by, uh, I also want to say, so like Mozart started learning at three, you know, and he did. And, um, and I've had students that are really very phenomenal. And of course you go on YouTube and there's some, you know, nine-year-old girl playing the drums or 10-year-old, 12-year-old kid playing an amazing jazz. And again, there's no question about that. And there's no, uh, uh, what, not in, the, in any sense of rude sense, but when you need to think about it, um, music has actually been around a long time. So there have been child prodigies for actually centuries, centuries of, you know, this kid is amazing, how does he do it? Nobody knows, you know, and then the, and in general, professional musicians who are, are they're not looking, oh, they can be jealous, and they say, well, he's got a gig that I didn't gig, get, but uh, a reasonable thing is to say, well, what's this guy going to be doing when he's 20? You know, is he going to be even better, you know, um, or is he going to be out selling shoes, you know, uh, not because he's no good or that's a bad thing, but it's a, a lot of, a lot of, you remember that kid on the internet about 10 years ago who was like, I had this mess, he was like six or eight or something, this little bodybuilder body, you know, it's like, wow. And then like, so now he's like, you know, 18, he just looks like a normal person. So um, saying that kids start young, some of them, and some of them can do it, many of them cannot. Uh, if your kid can't stay still and uh, uh, receive from that private attention, uh, what you should do is put them in a group thing where it's like, you know, we're all, clapping and we're singing songs and we're, um, you know, you got a, you know, and you got a little cup, 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 and, uh, and work together and, and getting concepts and music uh, and their own physical body and that they can sing and their pitches, their different pitches and things like that uh, without somebody uh, talking to them one-on-one. -on -one. Not that that's bad or one-on-one, -on -one, it's just um, not a sufficient. So again, in general, eight is about a good age, not six. Uh, I would say the majority of kids at six cannot do that. Now, if you did, if you thought my kid is amazing, you know, he, no, he really is. He really is a good musician. Here's the three instruments they can do at a young age. They can do the piano, they can do the drums, and they can sing. And uh, they can do those at an earlier age because God made singing so amazingly natural. It's very natural. People sing who ain't, ain't, ain't got two brain cells in their head. So. So a lot of people can sing and kids can learn musicianship and pitches and all kind of great things at a younger age because it's it's natural. The drums, it's like hit this, hit this. And I'm not, I, my gosh, uh, uh, professional, uh, skillful drumming is so dear to my heart. Not that I can do it, but uh, amazing drummers are just, gosh, they're worth their weight in gold. So I'm not... Somebody's saying, but it's very direct. Move this hand, hit this, hit it twice, hit it three times, hit this twice, hit this twice. Ah, look at that. You know, got a press roll going on. So, and then the piano, because it's like there's a white key, there's a black key, there's a white key, there's a black key, like that. Very direct. Guitar is not a good instrument to start. It's a great instrument for a grown up to start uh, or somebody who's, um, you know, 12 or something um, or 10. But a little bitty kid who's just discovering that he has five separate hands and another hand with different hands in them. I'm, I'm, uh, Picking, putting this finger here, but I'm doing this with this other hand over here. Uh, those are all new things to them. So uh, those three instruments are great for little bitty kids. Eight is a good age, uh, and um, but it's not always perfect. Some kids need to start later, uh, and some kids need to start earlier. Just recapping, and then the, your your own personal test, mom, dad, is that can they 
pay attention, maybe a better word to say, pay attention, uh, have their attention captured uh, for 30 minutes in a private one-on-one -on -one setting and not the teacher having to go, come on now, let's smile, don't, don't tear that cat in half, no, put the cat down. Not that, you know, just, hey, we're learning how to play, play the point, you know, like that. So anyway, there's your kid thing. All right, now, all right, here's number two. I'm looking over here. You know, I just like to say, I do not like the fact that I can see people are watching over here, but I can't see who they are. That bugs me. And really, truly, if you're on here, you ought to ask a question, you know, just like, you know, uh, does your chewing gum lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight? That would be a good one. Uh, and uh, so, but anyway, give me your questions. They're right there. Okay, now, Mary Spender, who's a YouTube musical personality, and she's a really a cute, neat girl. Uh, she did a video, and she, her video is about, here's the question, did a video, YouTube musicians can't play live. She says, many good musicians and teachers on YouTube cannot or never, they cannot or never play live. Is that true? Is it good enough to just know how to play a little and edit music on a computer and make it look like you are awesome? And then on this video, I haven't seen the video, but on this video she has Adam Le Neely, who's another great, um, got a great channel, uh, smart, excellent guy. Uh, and he's saying, yeah, yeah, now, now listen, if Adam ever sees this, by the way, I'm just telling you what I heard. And so that, that's got a video. she's got a video, Mary Spinney has a video, and, and Adam Neely's going, yeah, I can't play live. But I know he's in a band, and I know they just toured Europe, I think, so I'm not sure what that means. So here's the deal with that. So the most, uh, every, in music, there's many different skills. Uh, and... Um, Playing emotionally is a skill. Playing without stopping is a skill. Playing um, from notes is a skill versus playing by ear is a skill. Uh, playing along with others is a skill. Uh, these are all different things that people have in different measure. And uh, and of course, uh, I think we talked about, but just you have to decide, one must decide, what is what am I trying to be? Uh, I was listening to uh, the Johnny Carson show with not the whole thing, just a little uh, uh, the odd couple, da, 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 the, those two guests. And the point is, good gracious, the Tonight Show band, in, we're talking about Johnny Carson, 70s, 80s, those guys. <sighs> the point is, they're great musicians, but here's what's happening to them night after night. People are putting charts in front of them. You know, this guy's here. We're going to play his song. This guy's here. He, you know, he, he's got to do this in this other key. Play this little intro for this guy who's not a musician at all. So I'm just saying this. So those guys are like killer readers. They have to be killer readers. And I, you probably know, but most symphony musicians, of course, are killer readers. But when you go to watch a movie and there's an orchestra playing and they're playing all kind of cool stuff, those guys usually do that in one take. They lay, you know, two hours of music in front of them. And they do it one time, and there's your uh, score. They don't spend four weeks on that, you know. And on and on. Session players in, in uh, big, uh, important musical cities, L.A., uh, Nashville, uh, New York, um, maybe Dallas. Uh, you know, you come in, and you're presented with this thing. This is a blues chart. Do it great. This is a metal. This is country, you know. And uh, you're like, okay. And So these guys have to be great readers. But does the guy who works with the choir and makes this choir awesome um, you know and he's helping Jenny develop her range and he's making the altos blend and he's saying you know John I really don't think you're a, you're a tenor I think we need to get you down on you know he's doing all this stuff and he's making this awesome choir and he's inculcating uh, music and is, is he less of a musician than these amazing readers on the on the Tonight Show I don't think so it's just that in, in, follow me now Music is so humongous, so many different things, so many kinds of music. I could just go to like Christopher Park and say, Christopher, lay me out some, you know, uh, the uh, 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 the flat G run, you know, I, I, he could do it, but he sure wouldn't do it naturally. So, but he would, you know, so in, the point is lots of things to do in music. So you're a YouTube guy and uh, you are, you can play pretty good and you know a lot of things and you want to get that out to people and you want to be a success. And so it's like, I think what a lot of these people, if they can't play, 
uh, well in uh, live. It just means that they're not doing that a lot. And, and now listen, guys, you know if you're taking lessons or have taken lessons with me, I mean, you're a lesson taker is what I'm trying to get at, um, that uh, your personality tremendously, incredibly affects your ability to play live. And everybody, and listen, this is a straight up fact. Again, I rest on my 3,000 students. Uh, so everyone is affected by the audience. Some people are perfect, affected positively. This is so great, they're all watching me. Or get so hyper that they, you know, really and truly uh, do a worse job because, just because they're so excited about it, you know. But for most people, say 70%, the audience, because their personality affects them negatively. Some just a tiny bit, some a lot, and shuts them down. So anyway, so I would say that there's a lot of people on YouTube who are good musicians uh, that uh, do not, haven't developed the skill of uh, performing live. Now, um, again, if you wanted to overcome that, you know, what you would do, uh, we said before, but uh, what you do is you, you, start, you start performing live, but you do it when... It doesn't matter. You do it for your mom. You do it for your sister. You do it for your your boyfriend. Yeah, and people who love you. And, and you're all nervous, but you know, you know. On the other hand, they probably aren't going to shoot me. And so you do it, and you do it, and you do it for that same person or persons, until you start to feel relaxed. Okay, you know, well, these two people, they, you know, I can do it. And then you say, well, okay, now let me go to this person, you know, and then, you know, your neighbor or something. You know, what I'm saying is, you're you're putting yourself in a pressure situation, uh, and and what the idea is, we're succeeding at. So it's not this pressure to where you wet your pants and, and fall off the stage, but it's you know just this pressure where I can handle this and I can do this. Um, uh, it's uh, and just for example, for me, it's quite a quite a challenge to press past the fact that people are watching me and are watching me in eternity. So if I if I get you know I have practice a lot for the next three years and I get phenomenal, there's still going to be these videos of me playing kind of lamely, you know. And some of the stuff's really good, too. Uh, so anyway, uh, so the point there, all I'm trying to say is, this the one thing, yeah? uh, and that is um, that, so it's not good enough uh, to know how to play a little and edit music on a computer. Uh, on the other hand, a lot of people who, are make, who should, rightly, uh, are making uh, music videos and things like that, music videos, uh, teaching videos and explaining things and doing things about music, uh, you know, live performance may not be their main thing. And uh, I tell you, who's phenomenal, uh, um, not, 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 I'm not reading now, I wanted to mention this, is a concert pianist, concert guitarist, you know, people who, okay, I'm going to play <laughs> this piano concerto, two piano concertos, I'm not going to have my music, I'm going to play it flawlessly, and everybody's going to watch me. And the concentration, uh, the focus, you know, of not being affected by the fact that you know that that uh, vi that viola section, two of those people I know are flat, you know, and the conductor is doing this tempo. I told him I want to do it faster, and he's still doing. You know, I was like these things. You know, as you if you're a performer, you know that little things weigh on your mind. You know, <laughs> my shoes are untied. You know, so anyway, uh, so it is a different skill to perform live than it is to uh, make great music. And, and look, you guys need to also, just for your own, not, not the performers, but you need to, I just want to extrapolate this and say, hey, you know what? Uh, the, all the albums you hear, those guys are like, this is amazing. How do they do that? You know, well, one of the things they do is they do 78 takes, you know? And so, uh, yes, meaning, you know, that guitar solo, I mean, you guys know this. This is 40 years old, you know? I mean, they go through, uh, they do this as constant. Uh, you know, the guy with the guitar solo, he plays through, and he plays through the second time, he plays through the third time, plays through the fourth time, and they listen to that, and they go, well, uh, these six measures from take two, let's start with that, and now measure four right here is good, and they're cutting in and out of this and make, construct this amazing solo. Um, I, they, I, they don't all do that. Some of those guys are incredible. You know, they're great musicians, period. Whether they have to do them or not, I've done that. Uh, not exactly that, but, you know, retake. So, um, anyway... So all I'm telling you is that uh, there's a lot of different skills. Uh, one of the hardest skills is to perform live, uh, and you can learn to do that. Um, and I don't think those people who are on YouTube that are saying, I, I can't play live, I think what they would say is, 
what's what you see on YouTube, me doing on YouTube, is not my normal output. You know, I have uh, doctored this or done this, uh, you know, adjusted this to uh, come out with a better outcome. And of course, you as the consumer, me as the consumer, we'd be kind of mad if this uh, guy's making all kind of mistakes. You know, it's quite a challenge for me to ad lib in front of you. Um, yeah, because I'm making mistakes and doing things I don't want to do. Okay, so here's another question. What do you call a trombonist with a business card? What do you call a trombonist with his own trombonist business card? What do you call him? You call him an optimist. That's an optimist. Now listen, this would be a great time for you to ask a question saying that I don't understand your joke. But, hey, you know, it's a great joke anyway. Okay, so here, now this question, I had to, I had to, because of the copyright evil police, um, I had to uh, do some preparation for this. And, but this is a super f beloved topic. Everyone likes this question. Uh, which is, uh, what are examples of songs that use modes? What are modes? What are examples of songs that use modes? Okay, so modes are just scales. And uh, in the great, uh, if we take the notes, I don't want to do something, I got the guitar over here. I need a plectrum though for my guitar. Let's see what it is. So here's my plectrum. Okay. Now I'm doing a guitar. It just happens to be what I'm doing. Guitar players, I'm not going to do. I have a, a, can't, a, what do you call it? Right here to get a shot right on my neck. But I don't care about this because we're talking about the sound. Uh, talking about the sound. So, uh, so here, let's see, what is this in D minor? So if I take the notes of a C scale, yeah, it's beautiful, I hear it. And I play those notes starting on C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That is what we call Ionian mode. And here's the same notes starting on a D. That's called Dorian mode. That is, if a song was in D minor, use that scale. Same notes of the C scale, so no idea. It's called Dorian mode. And then if we started on an E, where was I? Uh, uh, that's called E Phrygian. It's a minor mode. Then we have, if we started on the F, the fourth note, we would have uh, Lydian. If we started on the G, we'd have Mixolydian. If we started on the A, we'd have Aeolian. Uh, if we started on the B, we'd have Lucrian. And yours, by the way, those were supposed to be fascinating. Those are supposed. Those are those are areas of Greece. And the uh, Pythagoreans and those folks who are writing uh, the original things about Mose that we do not hardly know anything about would say, hey, the people in Phrygia are like this sound. <laughs> you know, they, they're all getting off on that. And when you play this mode, you're going to act like the Phrygians. And they would say stuff like, you don't, don't let your kids listen to stuff in Dorian Minor because they'll rot their brains. Rude it. Uh, so uh, anyway, however, we don't we don't have that. So anyway, point is modes are just different scales. Ionian mode and uh, Aeolian mode are what we would call the major scale. And uh, so, but there's two other major modes, um, Lydian and Mixolydian, that we just heard or talked about. And there's two other uh, minor modes, Dorian and uh, Phrygian. And there's all kinds of variations on that. And I think I did this last week, seems like, uh, where we talked about, like, there's just, there's just many, 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 many uh, other scales. Uh, there's about 30. And so, uh, so here's... Uh, and so there's no straight-up scale that does that. Uh, so anyway, but one of the big things about learning to play or playing in modes is that uh, you need a song to back this back that up. That is uh, not just, so if I play, let's get my track here a second ago. Uh, I sadly, looks like I've turned that off. That's so sad. It's gonna, gonna take a while to get back to it. Oh well, the point is if I, uh, just cause I, I, so if you take uh, the minor, the Aeolian minor, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. If you raise the sixth note, one, two, three, four, five, six, you get Dorian minor. Uh, so, uh, 
the chords and the structure of the song has to support uh, playing in mode. So I made a couple of tracks. Oh yeah, I did, I did. And now I want to see my tracks. Where are they? Oh, here's my Dorian lines. Okay. There we go. Let's see if that's how loud that is. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? I like it. Okay, now I want to say Carlos Santana should have, they probably did try to patent, you know, Oye oh yeah, Como Va, Evil Ways, Europa, almost all of the songs have this uh, scale. Now, we've said this in other classes, I think we said it in the improvisation thing yesterday, but anyway, the point is, so scale is going this way. Da, da, do. Well, I want to do my... Do, 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 It's a sixth note. So we, but we take those notes, we turn them this way, now they're chords. So if we're in a minor key, let's do C minor. Then the other chord, or the chord that we commonly de de delineating, hey man, we're in Dorian minor, the four chord, here's the C minor, F minor. Well, that F, the four chord, C, D, E, F, would be not F minor, but F major or F7. So, so raising that sixth note, uh, do, 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 raising that sixth note would give me that major four chord. So anyway, here we go. Point is, is just, here's a little song. It's playing D minor and G7, D minor, G7. So instead of, D, instead of this, and G minor. See, darker sound. It's going. Okay, now let me just take a moment. Just, you'll hear this in many songs. track poorly I don't know why it's got it's sitting on that G minor but check it out any song in any do here's the song here's the question was songs that are in minor key so I go I go yeah I go like here I go oh yeah come over I don't know the words the line the line oh yeah come over I don't know the words the day the the line and I go Ways, baby, with Gene and John and a who knows who you get now. So I'm just saying, this is definitely not the key that this was recorded in, and also I'm just singing with my voice. So let's uh, hope this makes it through. Uh, okay, so now Dorian minor, that was the sound. This sound, uh, minor one, major four. Major four. I guess what? So if you start from the D minor scale. Uh, you'd be playing D E F G A. Where was I? Yeah, D E. Yeah, D E F G A. B natural, C, which uh, is uh, not the same as B D natural minor, which is D E F G A B flat. So we raise the sixth note. But you know what? That's the same notes as the C scale. So if you want to play in any minor key. In a in Dorian minor, you just say this is in the key of G, and I'm going to use go down a whole step. I'm going to use the F major scale. Set it here. So, just to make the point. Now, again, if I was on the flute, there's the flute right there. I'm going to play the C scale like you're in band. No. No, what am I? 
Sorry, it was embarrassing. Live performance, what do you know? Ow. <laughs> okay, I want you to hear the same scale. Here it is. Let's start back up. Yep. Same scale. Mm -hmm. I was just notes of the C scale. Here the first major pattern. And it comes down great. What a cool sound. Aww. Now my thing's stuck on the G. Okay. And just to make the point, it's not about modes are not about funky uh, minor whatever sounds here's a different track which I hope is recorded better uh, and this would be I recorded this in Mixolydian but not using it as a blues so here we have the D scale uh, yeah. D E F sharp G A B C sharp D Make it mixolydian, I would lower this lower the seventh scale to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Instead of this, lower it. Now let's listen to that sound over my hopefully amazing track. So uh, this is going D and C, D, C, so it's going like, oh. it's not about guitar. So um, I didn't realize my chart would sound that strange. I don't know why it does. So, and guess what? So we go, take the D scale, and we lower the seventh degree, seventh scale degree, we get a G scale. Here's a G scale. for that was Midnight Cowboy. Uh, it reminds me of that. I don't know why that sounds like that. So, uh, but talking about the kind of abrasiveness. Like, I kind of like that. It's kind of gnarly. But anyway, so the sounds, what I want you to hear about me playing. You hear the lots of songs. This is kind of a movie song. Ba -ba 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 -da 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 That's mixolydian mode, which has a lower, same as the major scale, but has a lower seventh scale degree. And that, by the way, is the same notes as the major scale up a perfect fourth. If you want to play in C mixolydian, 
You go up C, D, E, F, and you do some notes of the F scale. And you're going to play in the A mix leading, you go up four notes. A, B, C, D, and you use the notes of the D scale over a C chord, an A chord. If you just play the notes of a D scale over a D chord, it sounds like B. But if you want it to sound like A mixolydian, then you've got to be playing an A chord under it so it sounds like a mode. If you want to use the uh, Dorian minor, <laughs> I can play the, the notes of the C scale all day long, but if I play a C chord under it, it sounds like a C scale. It only sounds like D Dorian if I'm playing a D chord. A D minor, sorry, D minor chord. Then your ear goes like, hmm, it hears a changed note. All right, so there you go. Okay, I'm going to, I am going to stop. Oh, yeah. And I even have another question. And we'll talk about that next week about how to pick a teacher. Well, here's how you do it right there. You contact me at www.dallasmusiclessons. And if you uh, have just any questions about anything, uh, send me an email, mark at dallasmusiclessons.com. And uh, any questions you might have at all, just email them to me. And always, until I see you again, I want you to have fun. I want you to be awesome. And uh, I really do. I want you to be like successful in all your music. So you just let me know of anything I can help you with. <clears throat> Subscribe. Share this, darn it. And uh, I, I always want to say you need to leave me in your will. And uh, <coughs> do the subscribe button and do the uh, notification button. Okay. I'll see you next week. Bye.